Section 5 Ad Update. Debate. The Honourable Member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have to say I'm so pleased to rise and speak to my private member's bill, C-247, an act to expand the mandate of Service Canada in respect of the death of a Canadian citizen or Canadian resident. It's been an incredible and surreal experience to shepherd this bill through Parliament so far, and I'm honoured by the support it's received on all sides of this House. Through this bill, we've demonstrated what parliamentarians can accomplish when working together with one another to provide for their constituents and all Canadians. Few things are so daunting as the prospect of losing a loved one. Few things are so difficult as actually settling the fares of someone after they've died. Over the course of my time as a lawyer and then as a member of Parliament, particularly while preparing and researching this bill, I've heard countless times how unprepared people are for not only the grief of losing a friend or family member, but the administrative burden that goes along with the loss. <clears throat> Marnie Williams, Vice Chair of Bereavement Ontario Network, put it especially eloquently in her testimony before the Standing Committee on Human Resources, Skills and Social Development and the status of person with disabilities on this bill. She said, at the age of 30, I found myself a widow and solo parent to two children, aged three and three months old. <clears throat> My world had been completely turned upside down and inside out. I was so devastated by the death of my husband, Keith, and the reality of supporting my children through their grief that I didn't have the time or knowledge or desire to struggle through the multitude of paperwork that was required. End quote. As parliamentarians, opposition and government alike, it is among our foremost responsibility to Canadians to find ways to ease these burdens when the solutions are available to us. We can do that here. <clears throat> As it stands, there is no single window one can approach to notify the necessary officials about the death of a loved one. A bereaved Canadian, husband, wife, child, or other estate representative may have to contact many separate federal government departments and send death notifications to each in the absence of a simpler, streamlined process. Unfortunately, successfully notifying every necessary department or official can involve the repetition of submitting the same information to different people and is often, at the very least, confusing and tedious and just as often emotionally draining and painful. More worrying, it may involve such an overwhelming amount of information that someone notifying the government of a death can miss a department, sometimes to detrimental results. Service Canada lists that it must be contacted with the notification of, quote, date of death, when an old age security or Canada pension plan recipient passes away and for the application of potential survivor benefits. Similarly, if someone received employment insurance benefits prior to his or her death, there is a separate application to cancel those benefits or to apply for additional benefits to which he or she may have been entitled. Had the deceased lived in Canada and in another country, their survivor could be eligible to apply for pension and benefits because of a social security agreement. <clears throat> An estate's legal representative also makes a separate effort to contact the Canada Revenue Agency to provide a deceased's date of death in addition to preparing final tax returns and stopping payments on any tax credits. If the deceased was receiving the, child, the Canada Child Tax Benefit, the Universal Child Care Benefit or the Working Income Tax Benefit, those benefits must be stopped and if applicable survivor benefits can be applied for. That list is by no way exhaustive but it serves to paint a picture of the myriad approaches to government one must make after a loved one has passed away. <clears throat> Jim Bishop, chair of the Funeral Association of Canada's Government Relations Committee, related a story of a man handling the estate of his deceased father-in-law. After the funeral, he notified all the departments he thought necessary, but noticed nearly a year later that money was still going into his deceased father-in-law's account. He had realized that he had to let Canada Pension Plan know, so they were still paying out a pension. When he and Mr. Bishop spoke to Service Canada, they were given the impression that this happens often enough. That sort of angst is not necessary. We can change it, and this bill will. 
This bill calls on the Minister of Employment and Social Development to implement all measures necessary to make Employment and Social Development Canada, and more specifically, Service Canada, the single point of contact for the Government of Canada programs for all matters relating to the death of a Canadian citizen or resident. While consulting with the Minister and departmental officials after second reading, I learned that there would need to be some modifications to provide that this is for government programs authorized to use the social insurance number of the deceased. This was not provided for in the initial drafting of the bill, but it became clear to me that it was essential in order to accurately match data or more plainly to ensure that the person who died is the person receiving X benefit or Y benefit. <clears throat> A single window for death notification is not a new idea. In the United Kingdom, their government already instituted the Tell Us Once registration process, and in France, the online service portal Mon Service Public for death notifications. It is estimated that beyond the more personal costs of eliminating considerable hardship and grief, the Tell Us Once will save the government over $300 million over the decade. Service Canada is ideally situated to perform this function for Canadians. Located within, empl within Employment and Social Development Canada, Service Canada already gives Canadians access to a range of federal government services and benefits and was intended to streamline access to and provision of government programs and services for Canadians. Bill C-247 is a practical expansion of Service Canada's mandate and the logical choice for bereavement reporting. It is the first step in a wider strategy towards cost savings and reduction of red tape while improving client services. <clears throat> the Auditor General found in his 2013 report, Access to Online Services, that the integration of service delivery and the sharing of information among departments is, in his words, limited. <clears throat> As we've seen through the various departments that require notification of the death of a Canadian, their family, friends or agents often have to work with multiple departments separately, frequently requiring them to provide the same information multiple times to various sources. The Auditor General also found at that time that instructions provided online by Service Canada about the process for certain life events were incomplete. He noted additionally, and I quote, departments are focused on delivering the statutory programs and mandates for which they are accountable. There is no incentive for departments to share information, end quote. When it comes to the death of the loved one, the AG found similar, similarly that, and I'm quoting, someone must contact each department separately and follow different processes. As this information is not generally shared and departments do not offer the ability to do this online. This makes it difficult for users who may be trying to stop the payment of certain benefits to prevent overpayments while trying to apply for others." End quote. The Honourable Member for Kamloops Thompson Caribou said it very well at committee, and I'm quoting, the Red Tape Commission certainly heard consistently that Tell Us Once was, wants interaction and how difficult and time-consuming it is for businesses to deal with government. I think we can all imagine what happens when someone who's grieving and the difficulty of finding out many months down the road that they have to pay the government back. That's extremely challenging. It's better to get that stopped in the first place." End quote. The government, for their part, has identified this type of modernization as a priority as well. In this year's report on plans and priorities, the Minister's message states, and I'm quoting, ESDC will focus on achieving service excellence for Canadians by further modernizing service delivery, focusing on its core business priorities and increasing the use of technology. Through Service Canada, the government will ensure that Canadians quickly receive the benefits to which they are entitled, entitled and access to a wide range of programs and services, end quote. It continues later stating, and I'm quoting again, Service Canada will continue to work with other departments so that Canadians can better access more Government of Canada services through Service Canada, end quote. What better way to start that process than by facilitating the client experience of Canadians at an incredibly difficult time in their lives? 
When I look back on my time in Parliament, one day this bill and the collaboration and goodwill demonstrated by members from each party will stand out. It is an incredible feeling to know your private member's bill might pass the House of Commons. At second reading, I remark that members can sit in this House for quite some time without the opportunity to in introduce a private member's bill, let alone see it debated, finessed and passed. It is all the more meaningful to me as I will not be seeking re-election when this Parliament comes to an end. This experience will stand out for me, and I am so very proud of what we are all accomplishing with the passage of this bill. There were a number of people essential to the progress of this bill behind the scenes. I wish to thank the Funeral Service Association of Canada, the Bereavement Ontario Network, Hospice Palliative Care Ontario for their early support as well as for their testimony on behalf of this bill before the committee. I wish to thank the Minister of State for Social Development, her staff and the departmental staff who provided invaluable advice and worked diligently to provide the amendments necessary to the bill's success. I wish to thank Brian Wilford for initially proposing this measure, Wendy Leesk for her advice on the subject matter, and Elizabeth Cheeseboro for her invaluable assistance. Finally, to every member from every party who spoke in support, I thank you sincerely. You've demonstrated to Canadians what a parliament working in their best interests looks like. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.